Hello, dear Toastmasters, dear guests, dear Mr. President. I chose the topic uh, <coughs> languages in our life. Everybody here knows at least two languages, and uh, I guess uh, everybody would agree with me that one language uh, gives, uh, another language opens many doors in your life. As Frank Smith said, one language sets you in a corridor for life, two languages open every door along the way. Uh, when I learned English, it opened so many doors in my life. Mm. I was able to study in the United States, I met many interesting people, uh, foreign uh, guys, and of course I uh, found out many, I knew, I get acquainted with many people, interesting people in the Toastmasters community. Uh, I started learning English language just from the uh, school, but uh, the quality of school, school <laughs> is not very good. Uh, so I started by myself uh, from the year 21 and uh, did it by myself. And I, I think I'm still not a smooth talker. Maybe it depends on the on the brain structure, on the structure of my brain. I think uh, my brain is more logical and uh, to be a smooth, smooth talker you should have, uh, have uh, an advanced uh, analytical thinking as well as uh, abstract thinking. So, let's start our uh, meeting. Uh, we will with the job master Irina Chernyaga. I have two funny story, stories, very little stories. Uh, <coughs> a man of middle age came to personal manager. It's a great pity you don't suit us. We need people young, people ambition, with creative roles. The man smiled, smiled and said, it doesn't matter. Write down my telephone number. When it is become and the second one, uh, <coughs> stomachist and a patient. The doctor said it is necessary to extract your tooth. What's the price? Two thousand. Oh, two thousand for three minutes of work? If you want, I can do it slower. Greet <laughs> <laughs> uh, the members of my team. Uh, the first is the uh, uh, timer, Tatiana Fedotova. My name is Tatiana, and I'm going to be a timer today. As you know, time, time management is, is one of the most important, easy, especially for the beginners and even for experienced speakers, uh, to make a presentation, to deliver the content, content of the speech, and at the same time to make sure that they stay within time limits allocated to them. So today is the timer. Uh, I'm going to monitor your speeches and to help you to stay within uh, the time limits. As usual, I have three sides, uh, three, three colors. I will show you uh, the uh, green one uh, when you reach minimum time allocated to you. 
Then I will show you the yellow one when there are only uh, 30 seconds before maximum time. And I will show you the red one when you exceed the time allocated to you. So please pay attention to me and uh, uh, the signs which I will show you. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the... Today my part is uh, account manager and I am responsible to notice some sounds and words uh, used as, crutch, um, as a crutch by any speakers during this meeting. <laughs> Master is uh, Simeon Moser. I will notice uh, any uh, good phrases, good words uh, and try to fix your um, uh, not properly used uh, phrases and uh, meanings. I have selected uh, one word for today. It is uh, consciousness or consciously. Uh, shall I write it down? Yes. Less than in four months, 
and Leo's wave was extremely fast. Does it affect me? Did it, sorry, did it affect me? Yes, it did. Because I was a young fashion designer who was not able to find a job. I could stay by my own, look at the situation and think about it. Did I do that? No. <laughs> I stayed with a company of my friends who were in the same situation like me. Drinking almost every day, crying. <laughs> and try to forget what a fail happened to us. But as I said, life is a roller coaster. And one day I decided that if there is no job for me in the market, then I should create one. What I did, I started to participate in different fashion challenges and competitions. I won every of them. The life was crazy. It was non-stop life and work. Uh, St. Petersburg, Moscow, Serbia, Shanghai, fashion, competitions, challenges, exhibitions, fashion weeks. It was crazy. No time to eat, no time to sleep. You should just create something more, something new. And this, this speed was extremely fast. One moment while my life made a loop to loop. I was 23 years old when some Chinese guy just announced that I'm a winner of a fashion crowd challenge. Where I participated tons of international designers, really tons, more than 1,000. And I just won $100,000 of investment to my brand. <sighs> well, it's supposed to be so. We signed the contract. I created parcel to the experts and waited for the money that I won. The only thing I received was a message that the company would not pay cent to winners because of the financial fraud investigation. The sale just stole the money and ran away. That was an upside down moment for me. <laughs> I already had my fashion studio with a team of seven people, 120 square meters of rent, and huge responsibility. I was exhausted, morally destroyed, and I asked the universe just to bring some stability and rest to me. <laughs> I sold business and I focused on another big fashion travels. I've traveled through 28 countries. I backpacked through Europe, I abroad at Asia and Middle East, I lived in Bali for four months, I've done scuba diving in Egypt, snowboarding in the mountains of Dombai and in Finland. I've been surfing on the waves of Indian Ocean and cruising from Europe to Maldives through Suez Canal. It all started from the age of 18, when I got my new international passport and possibility to travel without parents' permission. It was like, yay, freedom! Probably some of you remember the comedy Euro Trip. Because I was a fan, I wanted to have my own like crazy great adventure story. And that wish came true pretty fast. Me, my friend Anna, one huge backpack, two weeks, seven countries, twelve cities, five nights in a bus, six train rides through Germany, one night on a halo. By the way, it was my best night, really. One night on a railway station and one love from the first side to the city where I was born. Yes, I was born in Germany. Uh, in eine schöne Stadt Potsdam nicht weit von Berlin. Sorry, <laughs> that was my German alter ego. <laughs> I was born in an amazingly beautiful city Potsdam that is not far from Berlin. So as you could hear, I also speak German. Well, not as perfect as Russian and not as good as English, but still. I also learned Spanish with no reason just because it sounds like a music to my ears. Well, after learning German, probably every language sounds like a melody, right? <laughs> there are many things in the world which I am interested in. Last year, human design just came into my life. And this year, I expanded this interest and studied other metaphysics systems like body and actually. I don't know what the curve is waiting for me next. I keep learning, taking new challenges, opportunities, and working on making my life, my dream come true. Before I told you, I asked universe to bring stability in my life. And now I realize I don't need it anymore. From my experience, stability is too close to stagnation. While others are developing and going forward, you are stuck in stability. Well, of course, sometimes it's, it's important to stop for a while and take a look on your life if you are going into the right direction, but not stuck on this step. There is no fun in stopping roller coasters, right? So let's enjoy the ride. 
with its every uphill, downhill, dip and curves. Thank you. You have um, one minute or two to get to write a feedback if you mm -hmm. like. It will be an unusual uh, project. In our club, uh, we will have a Q&A session, so be prepared, uh, listen carefully, and prepare your questions that you can ask after the speech to, to our speaker. The speaker is uh, Diana Azubin, and the title of her speech is what they don't teach you at language schools. In the meantime, while Rita is looking for the remote, I think I'm going to start the speech. On Monday, a crazy thought came to my head. Hmm, my life is too stable, I thought. I'm lacking, lacking some challenges. How about I learn something new? How about I learn a new language? Hmm, but what language shall I learn? Huh, I know. Why not do I study the hardest language, Chinese? That sounds like a good challenge. I took the idea seriously. So I went and signed up to full-time courses, one year full-time course. So that's Monday to Friday, three hours of lessons every single day. Now, one thing though, at that point I was still in full-time education, so I had Monday to Friday classes at my other university as well, plus some work on the side too. But I thought it will be fine. I have combined more than one thing before, I will survive this time again. Now, everything was great until the first lesson. Now, as you know, this is how letter B looks in different languages. B, 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 D. Okay, this is Arabic, a little bit harder. It's still B. It's still second letter of the alphabet. There's still just one letter to learn. Now, this how B looks in Chinese. Oh. Actually, there are more. They just didn't fit. And there is actually no such thing as B. All of them have a certain meaning, so one means no, one means eight, one means ten, one means dad, one means north, and etc. And I was told that in order to succeed in my course, I need to learn 5,000 of these characters by the end of the year. So not 33 letters of the alphabet in order to be able to read, no, 5,000 characters. I thought, well, I'm not the only one here with this problem, so we are all stuck in it together. It's a common problem. We'll be fine. However, since the other students took the course a bit more seriously than I, well, when they read the full-time description, they realized it's full-time, so they stopped doing everything else in their lives and just came to study Chinese. They uh, according to the rules of the course, you're supposed to spend 12 hours a day on learning Chinese. 12 hours a day. Now me, maximum, maximum, I could spend 5 hours a day. So as you can guess very quickly, I started experiencing problems. And day after day, I was becoming more and more behind the class. To the point that I became one of the worst students in the class. After one term, it was clear that I should either quit or do something about it. Now, as a person who doesn't like to quit, I thought, okay, no, there must be another way, some magic way to learn the language faster, quicker. So I started looking for these ways, and you know, I found them. I found several ways or tricks or methods, call them whatever, that helped me study the Chinese language faster and made me one of the best students in the class by the end of the year. Today, I'm going to share with you my secrets. 
let's say. But I would like to ask you, if you have any more questions, I will be very brief, but if you have any more questions, please write them down. And at the end, we'll have a Q&A session regarding these methods, okay? So the first thing, first problem I face, uh, you know when you learn a language and you learn words and words and words, so maybe you learn 500, maybe you learn 600 words, but still you can't say a sentence. Like you know some words, but when you want to say a sentence, you have some words missing from this side of the sentence, from this side of the sentence, and you think these are actually very, very easy words, I should know them, but no, for some reason you don't. Do you ever think, what's the problem? Why does that happen? Let's take the word apple in English. Isn't that one of the first words you learn? Because A, apple, right? Mm -hmm. Now, a question for you. In your native language, how often do you say a word apple during your day? During your week? Now, me, a person who doesn't like apples, I maybe say, say it once in two months. And plus a few more times if I mention the company Apple. But that's it. But that's the first word I would learn in English. Hmm. Shouldn't I learn more frequently used words? How do you think? And is there a solution to that? Yes, there are. It has been found. It's called Frequency Dictionary. You can Google it, you can download it online in any language, or you can buy it. What this dictionary does is it ranks the words according to their frequencies. So the most frequently used word has rank number one, and then two, three, etc. I will show you my frequency dictionary. Now, sorry, you can't see clearly. This is a Chinese one, and it has a section on, um, on fruits. So apple is actually number one fruit used, the most frequently used. However, what's its rank? 3,251. In other words, there are 3,250 more useful words I should learn before I learn the word app. This is a very powerful concept and you can find lists of words in any language, 500 most frequently used words, let's say, 600. And if you learn these words with a little bit of grammar, suddenly you can have conversations in any language, very quickly. So this is one trick. Second one. No, sorry. Now I had this problem. We had a lot of dictations. And uh, I would spend hours on studying for the dictation. On well, the next day, I come, I pass the dictation, all fine. However, one day after that, I forget it all. Then again, there is another dictation. I study hard. I come, I do the test, everything is fine, but one day after that, I just forget these words. Okay, maybe I remember like two out of ten, but this is nothing. I got really frustrated with that uh, until I found this concept. This is a forgetting curve. Apparently, it's not just me, it's actually normal. Human brain remembers. See, so 100% is when you study something, and after 20 minutes, only 20 minutes, you lose most of that information and only retain 58% of what you have just studied after 20 minutes. After one hour, 44. After a day, around 33%. Everything else you lose. And this is normal. It's supposed to be like that. That explains why I forget most of my words. Solution? Well, you probably know about it. It's called repetition. So when you repeat something, Immediately the curve goes back up to the 100%, then you again forget, then you again repeat, again forget. Now an interesting question is, how often do you need to repeat things to stop forgetting them? And I found this, this method, and I started to use it. So if you repeat something immediately after you studied it, then after 20 minutes, then after 8 hours, 24 hours, and then in 2 to 3 weeks, then you will remember the material for much longer. On average, you will remember about 80% of the material. I try to ratio to keep on remembering things. And finally, final method. Use your imagination when you are trying to memorize things. Now, you 
probably have heard before that well, we don't remember text very well. However, we remember images much, much better. So what stops you from adding an image to the word you are trying to memorize? Or even better, not just an image, also several senses, maybe a smell, a feeling. I know. So uh, here is an example of how one artist knew Chinese. <coughs> so here are some characters. So for instance, fire. She draws a fire around it. So she suggests to remember it that way. Now, this is one way, just the visual one. But you can take it further. And I will we'll have a little experiment, a little exercise with you today. See, mouth, uh, that one. In Chinese, it's call. Now, to me, in my head, call sounds similar to a cow. Now, I want you all to imagine that you're seeing a big cow in front of you with a huge mouth. Now, I want you to imagine, not just think. Huge mouth, and she's chewing something for a long time. You're approaching the cow, and suddenly it hits you. It's horrible breath. You're like, oh, oh my god, I want to be far, as far as possible from her mouth. I can't stand it. Little story. Now, I'm sure next time you hear the word, either the word, I tell you the word call in Chinese, you will remember that it means a mouth because you'll remember a cow. Or other way around, if I tell you mouth in Chinese, cow, you remember the call, it sounds like cow. So that's how it works. To sum it all up, Today I've shared with you the three secrets that helped me become the best student in the class, to study Chinese several times faster than others. And this concept applies not only to Chinese, it applies to many things, generally to your memory. And these three things are like keys that open the doors to many languages. And I give, it, give them to you, and I hope you use them one day. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, this is the time to ask them. Yulia, please. Could you please tell us uh, what nationalities was in your class that you were uh, studying along with you? Mm -hmm. They were uh, mixed, so we had some people from Singapore, so some Asians, and at the same time we had some English people as well. Yeah, thank you for the question. Well, I have just given an example actually with the cow and the coal. It had nothing to do with the symbol. It was only the, the way it sounds is similar to a cow. And same thing, you could find similar words or similar-ish words. Or just make up a story that, oh, it sounds like half of another word in another language. So it needs, it needs some thinking, I agree. But with practice, it gets better and better. And then you use that story method. And then you remember the words better. Did you share this great uh, methods uh, with the other class members? Uh, no. <laughs> they were fine. They were doing fine. They spent 12 hours every day, so it's fine. I spent five, and uh, I had no problems with that. So we have luxury to learn it, right? Yes, you do have a luxury to learn it. Uh, what about um, the method of uh, content wrapping around the world? Uh, uh, did you use it? or? Uh, I mean, uh, there is a method when you like to use, for example, uh, learn not only the words but the language, and you uh, take a word and wrap it to the content. So you uh, try to use it in phrases and so on. Uh, could you give an example, maybe, please? Uh, possible. In a good example with the cow, for example, you take the cow and try to. Uh, uh, try to tell some story with it, and uh, uh, not only story, but uh, try to look for a content that you can use the cow, for example, I don't know for for a meat or a cow and uh, and the grass, etc. Yeah, something like that. 
I personally didn't use it, however, I read about this method, they say mm -hmm. it's very good as well, it's a working method, so you put the word in different concepts, right, mm -hmm. and then you have to say these things, or right? Yeah. Yeah, and then that makes you think about how to use this word properly, yep. it's a good method, mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't use it though. Okay. <laughs> Can we have, a, oh, okay, oh. you live, you live first, okay. Uh, about correct um, spelling, because there are some words that can be memorized. With the spelling, well, best way is repetition, so the way I was studying for dictations. So you write them, you memorize them, then you repeat them immediately, then after 20 minutes, 8 hours, 24, so about 5 repetitions, and that will get you where you need. Really. How long do you learn Chinese? What level do you have now? And do you actually, can you actually speak like with Chinese? Yeah, so my level is around B2, however, I don't use Chinese so frequently right now, unfortunately. However, I can watch Chinese drama. Oh. Yeah, but like, uh, I can guess some of the stuff, but... Yeah. Can you say something? how Jiao Diana, you want some young... You should say how. How? How. I ask you, how are you guys? <laughs> and you just answered that you're all good. Any more questions? Uh, oh, okay. Maybe, maybe the last question. All right. uh, what's the purpose of uh, learning Chinese? Just for fun or what's the goal? Generally or for me? For you. For me, well, China is the second biggest economy in the world. I thought it's a useful language to learn. And my company works with China. I travel to China mm. several, like I spend in China about six weeks per year. Yeah, that's, that's why. Yeah, thank you. Well, okay, last question from the test master. Yeah, how are you discipline yourself uh, with repetition, with repeating? Do you use some apps or just watches? Well, I actually created a big diary and I was just like, Mark, okay, so this material I have repeated it once, twice, three times, and so five times, and okay, I'm done. <laughs> That's it. Okay, thank you all, guys. Thank you so much. I hope you have the rest, uh, amazing rest of the evening with. Thank you. Thank you. So you have a minute to take a drink or snacks. Thank you. So let's proceed with our meeting. Now we have a table topics session, and the table topics master is Yulia Milovanova. Most welcome guest. Uh, this session of table topics is uh, very exciting and challenging. I love it the most. Uh, it is uh, providing you with opportunity to enhance your um, speech with impromptu way and do it before the audience. You're gonna have from one to two minutes for your impromptu speech. And before you're gonna have about 30 seconds to, to think about the topic if you want to. And uh, I challenge you and encourage you to use the word of the day. Today it is a consciousness. And um, the questions of my session is gonna be related to our topic of languages. Uh, and I'd like to note that uh, in the end, during this session, I'm going to uh, write down the names of our participants on our board and uh, so you could vote uh, afterwards for the best uh, table topic speaker. And in the end of our meeting, we're going to know who is going to be uh, the best uh, table topic speaker. So, <clears throat> are you ready? Yes. yes. Okay, so who is going to be who gonna be the first volunteer of our session? I promise it will not be that uh, hard to proceed. Okay, this come to the stage. To the stage of silence. Yes. Mikhail, I know that. And uh, today in our, our topic is languages. Do you like to learn new languages? Well, everything about new languages. I have not tried for a long time already, <laughs> so really don't know. So the first question is, what language sounds better to you and why? Please take your time and...
Don't forget about the question, the, the work of the day. Yeah, thank you, Madam. Table topic uh, master. What conscious uh, reply can I give to that challenging inquiry? So, as usual, you come to the station, you try to think horizontally and vertically. That's what I mean by that. So, vertically means you respond exactly to the question as it asks. So, the question from the table, uh, Madam Table Topic Master, has been what language sounds best to you. And in that case, I was, I think, excited by Diana today when she was started talking Chinese. And probably, if I accumulate all the languages, Chinese would be one on the top. And what is the reason? Because I understand zero words. Zero words. So that's why to look cool, probably, that's one of the candidates. And other candidates, we should probably even understand even worse, the African languages. Because they're so far away from the way we typically structure our speech. And when I was in South Africa, I was exposed to a few of them. And some of them actually include very unusual sounds. Like there is a nation called Ozi. I lost the skill. Ozi or something like that. Looks very funny. So that is my vertical reply to you, Chinese, and Ozi, because you can't understand the word from that. Thinking about horizontally, meaning giving the unexpected reply to the question. I, like any question, if somebody I'm talking to agrees with me, and gives me what I want. So that's probably the best combination. Nice. Nice. Thank you. Edita, uh, my question to you is, please tell us the story, how did you start learning uh, your foreign language for you? <laughs> it will be a very long story because I began to study English at the age at nine. <laughs> then I <clears throat> began to study at age at eleven, and uh, at last, really, I began to study English at the age of twenty-four uh, because in the <coughs> middle of uh, the finish of my school at the university. Uh, at the university I studied German because uh, the leadership of my faculty uh, considered that we must learn two foreign languages. And, uh, uh, because of my English, I must uh, study German as a uh, mechanic. But after graduation of my university, I began to restore my English. And uh, from that moment I started, 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 started English. I finished many courses. Uh, uh, I visited Great Britain. Uh, I visited uh, two different uh, labs. Three different clubs at some moment, but uh, I have no, not three people. But I think that uh, the story is to be continued, right? Of course, of course. Of course. <laughs> I am here and I continue studying in It's important always to be motivated, all the time. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, I have a question for you. What's your name? Uh, what do you think? Uh, should people uh, just imagine the situation that uh, people of all over the world would speak only one uh, language? Do you think it would be good or bad? And why? Oh. You know, uh, Starting with the answer on your question, 
I think it's mostly good than bad. Why? Um, first, because they all have some communication problem and uh, different languages, that's yet another problem. And so, uh, I think it will be good to be understood in every part of the world in, in one language, so in my opinion it is great. What will be if we uh, uh, ultimately every, everybody speaks uh, different languages? Let's imagine this situation. Uh, first, I think it's our reality because we, uh, you know, we think something, we uh, and then we try to explain, it. and uh, only after our explanation, uh, other person tries to translate it through their own lens and understanding of their work, uh, and uh, only after that he processes it and replies to us. So in this comp very complicated way, we can uh, how we communicate. So again, if we uh, break one barrier, I think our work will be more easy and more great. Thank you. Uh, my name is Maria. Yeah. And uh, what do you think? What languages uh, you would like to learn in the future and why? We? Oui? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Just me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We did in the final Toastmasters and yes, all the questions. Thank you for the wonderful question. It is a really good question. So anyway, I hope to learn the language uh, of the heart, the language culture and the language of art because if we return back a little for the previous question let me say that for me this kind of questions are makes us common and one society and everybody can understand these kind of languages free I mean without any translators just by ourselves, just by themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my question for you is, uh, how do you think, uh, how to encourage a child to uh, learn English? But uh, 
I uh, want to say that uh, it is very important to uh, to present more free time to your children. Be careful with it. <laughs> contribute to them as more uh, knowledge as, as, as possible because it is always so hard to learn them uh, forcefully because um, sometimes you cannot uh, memorize some words but if, when you're a child it's easier to remember everything okay. and um, the next who's going to next please Vladimir as the question is uh, Please tell us uh, the story or the case uh, when you wished that you spoke the, some foreign language, but you couldn't. Okay. Okay, okay so this story immediately, immediately comes into my mind. In 2014, I started learning Spanish. And uh, I started it for a certain goal. At the end of the year, I was going to the uh, Latin America for for prolonged vacation, five weeks. And uh, I learned it quite well. I actually used the same methods that Diana uh, told us about today. Great mind think, great mind thinks alike. But one time, I got into unusual situation. It was on the lake Titicaca, so it is very high uh, altitude lake, and there are a lot of islands located in there. And in these islands, there are indigenous people living who actually don't speak Spanish very good, as the rest of the country, which is built. And uh, I go there, and uh, there was an issue with uh, sitebooking.com. I booked a hotel on this island, basically a guest house, and couldn't uh, get in because it was closed. So I'm on an island, surrounded by, by water, no hotels or guest houses there, and uh, the one that I was booked is closed. So I had to approach some indigenous people there and uh, ask for help, I don't know, to stay, and of course they didn't know English at all. So I tried Spanish. And we did have some, some communication in the end. Uh, we spent the night, uh, me and my girlfriend, uh, in, in their house. However, this was the first and only time during my whole trip where I received the feedback that, hey, you don't speak Spanish very well. This was from this woman who did speak it much better.
which is and actually when you learn another language you know more about your language because you can take a look from outside to your culture to your language and uh, I think it's very very interesting very experience in our life now we will proceed with our second part of our meeting uh, evaluation part and the general evaluator of our today's meeting is Nikolai Tisenko Thank you. Uh, in uh, Toastmasters, we have prepared speeches, we have unprompt uh, speeches at the table topic exercise, and uh, one of the uh, most important uh, part of education is evaluation part, where people have a feedback: how did you did they make a projects and uh, what needs to be improved, etc. So uh, I think our speakers for today uh, are looking forward for this part to see a uh, feedback and I would like to invite you to the stage Vadim Mirkin who is going to... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Nikolai. So, Lina, uh, first of all I would like to congratulate you with your first speech. Um, and, uh, Really, as for me, I was impressed because not everybody delivers, you know, such a good speech for the first time. I mean, uh, as icebreaker speech. Uh, it's not, I think, only my words. And uh, uh, in general, I think that you've got full potential to become a really brilliant uh, public speaker. As for uh, as for a speech. Self. The goal of this first project is to introduce yourself and I think you fully succeed you know, in that goal and we uh, at the moment know that you are a very uh, interesting, very active person, a fashion designer, so I think the introduction was brilliant. Uh, in general we evaluate the, the speech in a, about a six, uh, six parts. I think first it's uh, content, the story of the speech, second it's uh, speech clarity, then uh, local variety, eye contact and uh, uh, audience awareness and the last one is uh, body language. Uh, you really excelled in, uh, uh, in your story, of course it's uh, very fun to content quite well structured, so for me it was very easy to follow your story. Uh, second part, you are, uh, I know that you was very scared, as you told me, but uh, I think it was not, not so, uh, um, not could be easily noticed from the, uh, from the audience. Uh, in fact, uh, the only your problem was that you uh, read right from the, from the screen, and I think that uh, if you would not do like that, you will remember uh, I think most of your story, and uh, as you have a very good vocal variety, you have quite good body language, and uh, uh, in my opinion. Uh, you should focus on, really focus on uh, consciousness. You can just be conscious on, uh, on stage and uh, maybe everything, everything other, I mean body language, um, eye contact and so on, uh, will become to you with that consciousness and with a good story. So, it was, uh, you know, much drama in your body language when you was on stage. And this was a very good part of the, of your introduction. So, uh, to accomplish my uh, my impression, uh, I think you uh, should be yourself, yourself on stage, and that's the, the maybe the only thing that you really need. Thank you. The evaluator of uh, evaluator. 
Um, uh, just a, a, a little feedback for you, Wadi. Mm -hmm. I think it's what was, it was good evaluation. Definitely, I think you encouraged Lena to go further, and that's a, that's very good. The only thing is to uh, uh, to explain to the whole audience what was the purpose of the meeting. Ice breaking means uh, tell about yourself, etc. I think that's stressing uh, this one a little bit more mm -hmm. it would be good. Now, overall, I think it was good evaluation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you had a structure. You explained. Uh, what, 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 was, what, what were the main points where uh, Lena have to pay attention to, etc. That was good. Now I'd like to invite to the stage evaluator of uh, Diana, Mikhail Bakutny. General evaluator, fellow club members, Diana. Well, thank you very much for offering the opportunity to evaluate this project. And um, why I say that? Number one, because I enjoy doing evaluations and being strict and hard to people. But second, specifically because your project has been about facilitating the question and answer sessions. So today, dear those master members and guests that have seen this question and answer session from Diana. And I really like to learn more about this topic to use it for, my, for myself and in my life. So that was interesting and new knowledge to me. And your objective has been, number one, to select a topic which you know well, and a topic which can actually generate some questions from the audience. So now let's review what happened on the stage today. I will structure my evaluation by saying a few words about the presentation and saying a few words about the questions and answer session itself. About the presentation, well, we all know you as an energetic speaker, the speaker who moves around the stage and takes control of the stage, who smiles, who use gestures and vocal variety. All everything has been here, and that is why I think you created some energy in the audience and you promoted us to think about your topic. So what I can suggest around the presentation itself. You have been using slides, and I see it quite often that the speaker becomes actually slave of the slides sometimes and not a vice versa. When you hear on the stage like a leader, and slides are the soldiers, and when you are in a battle, you never see that leader is somehow total to the soldiers like I did just now, <laughs> typically what you can do is to employ so-called TTT or 3 T technique, I mean touch, turn and tell. So when you want to visualize something on the slide, you can come here and say touch, touch, <laughs> and turn and tell. So in that case your um, attention will be towards the audience, but at the same time will be, you will be using the slide. So number two about the selection of the topic. You have been talking about yourself, personal story is always good. You knew what you were going to say us. However, I was thinking that better connect to the audience could be done if you preach the topic towards us. And so in a little bit more. So you have been saying that you can apply this technique, which is good. But maybe if you embed it a little bit more and since the beginning, then in that case you promote more interest within the audience and generate a little bit more personal questions how can we use it rather than to clarify some stuff around your presentation and yourself. Now about question and answer sessions. So number one, when we read the manual they say is that you might want to tell people that there will be questions and answers in the end, so people will start taking the notes for the future. You did that in the middle of your presentation. Probably if you can start with that saying, you know what? Today is a question and answer session. It will be 15 minutes presentation, 5 minutes questions and answers. Please get prepared. That would be probably, in my view, more effective. So number two about the techniques on the question and answer sessions. The manual suggests a few things that you can do, and you have done some of that. Number one is waiting. If somebody is asking a question, you politely wait until the person completes the question. And then you start answering. That has been done well. Number two, the technique number two is that if question is not that clear or complicated and you have got one of them, you ask for clarification. And the best way to clarify and ask open question, what do you mean? Can you give me more example? That has been done very well today in one of the questions. What could you imply more? Restating the question. With the same example, the question was quite long. And I was sitting over there, first I didn't hear full question, second I was lost what this question about. You are here on the stage, you can take your ownership and restate what is the question about. And if you can use it a little bit more, the question session will be more effective. 
And number one is the end. I think we heard about three tries to make the final question or something like that. And so final, another final, <laughs> let's take the those master also to ask the question. So final means final, and you can summarize what you have done. And if you feel that there is an interest in the audience for more questions, many will suggest us leave your personal contact or suggest some other way to uh, follow up of life. To summarize, thank you for letting me learn about questions and answers. I see that you have learned about questions and answers. You have employed some, some of the techniques. Recommendations, start clearly what you want from the audience and end clearly how to follow up and use all variety of techniques that you have learned from many of today. Mr. General Boleta. Of uh, good evaluation, though I have a few more comments uh, uh, for this as well. Uh, Mikhail, usually you have uh, quite a lot of things to say. And uh, especially you are, I know you, you like techniques and the methods uh, because you are a very structured person. But uh, within the time you have for evaluation for two minutes, I think uh, uh, to pay more, more attention for TTT techniques to explain what it is, maybe it's a bit too much for evaluation. It's, it's uh, such kind of things, it's better to move all, um, after the meeting when you have uh, personally to talk to Diana. I think it, that would be good to pay more attention on the time because you saw the red sign uh, uh, already. And overall, all the points uh, were good, but I think uh, just structuring the, uh, the evolution only to you know, main things because otherwise uh, too many details we have. So now it is uh, time to have uh, a report from our uh, team who is uh, going to share the outcome of the observation. So and I would like to start with uh, our timer. Tatiana Fedotova, please come to the stage with your report. Uh, today, from a timing perspective, uh, our meeting was almost perfect. So we started uh, almost in time, just five minutes left. Uh, um, late, thank you. <laughs> five minutes late. Almost all speakers uh, managed uh, to stay within uh, the time limits allocated to them. Uh, and with only exception of uh, Lina, but it was her uh, first uh, presentation, that's why I, I strongly believe that it's uh, just fine. Um, and Vadim uh, uh, and uh, Mikhail uh, making the evaluations, they also overrun a little bit the time allocated to them. All others were with Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was very good. The only one comment, maybe, when you uh, show the signs, it's better to keep them uh, visible and do not put them for the speaker to to, to understand uh, where he is in terms of the timeline. So now I'd like to invite to the stage a counter, Alexander Alexander Dobrovinska, please. I will report about uh, sounds and uh, words uh, which were used uh, as a trash by our speakers. Uh, lots of uh, sounds like A, E were used uh, by speakers, especially by Ermegra three times, uh, by Vadim uh, more than three times, uh, by Yulia. Uh, regarding, uh, regarding words, it was uh, pronounced by Diana actually three times, so one time, uh, by Vadim, so two times, maybe, I think two times, and so, also a few times. Um, also by uh, Mikhail was pronounced a uh, few times. Uh, well and so. Uh, but generally the speech was uh, smooth and clear so it was okay. Thank you very much. Uh, 
that it, it's good that you mentioned names and uh, mentioned the, uh, the, uh, the the mistakes people people had, but also it would be good for you to pay attention who is the winner in terms of the clearest speech as well, just to provide uh, you know uh, from cleanest point of view who is a you know a best person. That would be good also for. For, for your next report, if you have if you have uh, uh, such such kind of role in the future, so now I'd like to invite to the stage our uh, grammarian and the word of the day, uh, Simon uh, Massage. Dear just masters and guests, I'm afraid I recognized my fault uh, too late. I didn't explain the meaning of this word. And uh, how to use it? Well, uh, I, I would uh, mention about uh, several phrases I enjoyed. Uh, first of all, I liked uh, the phrase uh, pronounced by our president, Nikolai, that uh, some people, some persons, are braving to go to the stage. I enjoyed it. Then, uh, talking about uh, Ermek, uh, I would um, I recommend you to use uh, the phrase, not the phrase, the, ver the, the, ver the words like uh, at the age of something, uh, because you pronounce a little bit different, like started uh, from year to it. Uh, and uh, I would recommend you to use a fluent speaker instead of smooth talker or something like this. And I also liked. Uh, uh, faithful con concept of them. Also, some uh, small quotes our members uh, uh, did during our meeting about uh, using the word of the day for for people at least pronounce it, but only one time. I would uh, name them. Uh, Lina, Vadim, Mikhail, Yulia. Please uh, correct me if uh, I'm wrong. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, in terms of the uh, explain, make, making exa examples of how to use the consciousness uh, uh, word and, and also it would be better to write it down before the meeting, not during the meeting with a question should I write it down or not, of, of course it's, 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 it's necessary. So uh, overall the report is good because it was straight to the point uh, to those people who participated and uh, very good that you also highlighted the uh, good phrases, that was, that was excellent. Um, uh, so now I'd like to sum up the overall evaluation of the meeting. Uh, so I think it was it was good meeting with the active participation, and uh, I like uh, uh, so we have uh, quite a number of people who participated on the table topic exercise. Um, uh, that was good in terms of timeline. Uh, that was also good. You mentioned uh, five minutes. Uh, uh, we started later. But uh, we have only two speakers for tonight. Uh, usually we have three or four. Now it's, it's a bit unusual meeting for us. Uh, I think it's something which we need to improve a little bit. Um, uh, so uh, in my view, the um, the meeting was good. Um, maybe feedback for the Toastmaster, Yermak. Uh, when you orchestrate everything here, uh, maybe uh, communication with those people who are coming to the stage uh, would be more active because you, uh, you you ask some questions on a few people but not 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 uh, everyone and uh, do not say anything about them because when you introduce a, a, a person at the stage it's better to have a little story or something uh, for to, to make it smooth so such kind of thing it would be it would be good. But I know that uh, you had uh, this role uh, at very short notice and uh, you didn't, might not have time for the for preparation. Um, so overall, I think it was a good meeting. 